Right boys, so I accidentally fixed my diet and I thought you might find this interesting so I'll explain what happened. I decided that as a test I was going to eat what I call normal people food for the last nine days of February. So I was going to eat processed food still within kind of basic food rules. So eating three meals a day within a calorie restriction, so not going wild on the calories. But it was going to be processed food. I was eating like crisps, Kit Kat, sandwiches, bread, things that I wouldn't consider real foods. And after three days, I couldn't like bear the thought of another six days of it. And I went back to eating real food. So I kind of reverted off of eating what I would normally want to eat. So this is like cheat day every day, essentially. And I reverted back to real foods. And it was almost the thought of doing another six days was I couldn't hack it. I was craving to get back onto real foods and I was preferring the idea of eating real foods. Now this actually has a name and I came across this right at the back of Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, and it's called Paradoxical Intention. So the example he gives in the book, he gives a couple of examples, but I'll give you two. One is a man comes to him and he's got this problem. I can't remember if it was just generally speaking to people or like speaking to women. He would sweat. He would sweat uncontrollably to the point where he would get he would get self-conscious about what the person's thinking of him. And if he would like hold their hand or something, he's got sweaty hands. So he was worried about this. And that made it all the, like, all the worse. So with paradoxical intention, the solution is to... So with paradoxical intention, the solution is to try and do the thing. So Viktor Frankl says he told the man to next time go on a date or meet these people like whatever the situation was just assume in your head it's a write-off they think you're weird they think you're some sweaty weirdo and intentionally try and sweat as much as possible and the guy did it and he didn't sweat a bead there was no sweat at all and it solved his problem and the other example was a guy who was like a a clerk and he would write up letters his job was to write up letters and he kept getting hand cramp to the point where he couldn't do his job and he'd go in to write these letters up and he had to write them neat and they would come out all like scratchy and just poor handwriting and that's not very good when your job is to write letters neat and he said right your job now tomorrow when you go into work the letters are coming out poor anyway so whatever you do it's already bad so he said your job is to go in and purposely write them as illegible and as um rough as possible and he set the intention he was like right today i'm going to show him what a good scribbler i am and that was his intention i'm going to scribble these down and then he went in and he couldn't do it he couldn't like something in his brain couldn't scribble the words out they came out neat no hand cramp and he was back to normal and i remember reading this thinking yeah that sounds good and it does kind of sound like it would work it's like reverse psychology when you want to get someone to do something for you, if you say, oh, I really want you to do this, deep down, if they don't want to do it, they'll be like, no, I'm not doing it. But if you say, oh, I'm not that bothered, like, could do it Tuesday, could do it Thursday, it don't matter. Because you're not putting an emphasis on it, they'll do it on the day you need. But if you say, I really need this, and it's the same with a lot of things in life. If you need it to happen, it doesn't happen. But if you don't need it, it tends to just fall into place. So I had this information and I was like, yeah, sounds good, but you can't, it, it's very hard to implement knowingly. You can't consciously say, well, I'm trying to lose weight, so I'll try and eat all of the shit food I can and gain weight. Because you tend to just eat shit food and gain weight. That's binging. We've all done that. But it accidentally happened. So I set the intention where my goal is to lose weight and eat real foods, for some reason, and I've never done this, I've tried a lot of different things, and it's usually diets. I'll try keto, I'll try vegetarian, I'll try carnivore. But I've never done this, and it was because me and my friend Shane set the intention to have answers. By the end of February, we'll know exactly what our belief is with diet. I've been studying it long enough that I should know by now, I should have conviction. 
so I thought, do you know what? I'll do this. I've never done this before. For the last nine days, I will eat what I consider to be bad. I will try and do what the guy was doing by sweating. I'll try and sweat as much as I can. And the other guy, I'll try and scribble instead of write neatly. And it doesn't really make much sense, but it's a strategy I've never tried before. And I'll tell you what, by day three, I was eating the food and I wasn't eating vast amounts of it. I was eating very controlled three meals a day within 2,200 calories or whatever it was. And by day three, I couldn't bear the thought of it. I was like another six days of this. I don't want to do it. The food tastes artificial. It just was a struggle. And I went back to real food and I was sat the, on the fourth day eating real food to so something like grass fed beef, hard boiled eggs and some fruit. And it just tastes amazing. In comparison to the shit food that I would normally crave, this is normally cheat day food. I was like, this is absolutely beautiful. And this is nutrition and I, I'm, you know, happy with this. So I don't know how you would get paradoxical intention to work for you if you actually tried to do it. I mean, the two cases in the book, they it worked for them. But I realised afterwards, I didn't mean to do that. This wasn't like a technique, but I was like, oh, that's what that is. So I just thought that was interesting. It's another like tool in your arsenal. Just say to yourself, well, I don't really know what to prescribe for this one because I guess you would say for the next seven days or the next 10 days, I'm not on a diet. I can eat what I want. And you kind of get this, you know, around Christmas, you eat what you want. There comes a point where you feel so terrible after you've binge eat, like, binge eat Christmas foods. You're like, I just feel like eating a salad. Do you know what I mean? After eating chocolates and shit, you're like, do you know what, I really fancy a salad. Whereas normally that's the, the last thing you want to eat, if that's not something you, you like. So yeah, I just found that interesting. Paradoxical intention. But you can kind of think of, and it's a creative way of adding more, yeah, I don't know, you get the idea. But anyway, hope that helps and let me know if you've ever implemented this. But it's kind of, it's a really broad thing. So I used it with food, but judging by the example in the book, it's... It's like if you're nervous talking to women or going on dates or whatever. If you say to yourself, well, I'm just going to assume this person thinks I'm weird and that they don't want to go on a second date. Like if you really need the date to go well and you're like needy, you're thinking, oh, this has got to go well. I really like this person. It never works out. When you've got strong feelings for someone, you always fuck it up. And it's like an argument. You always come away thinking... I wish I said this, I wish I said that, this is a great point. If you go into an argument thinking, so this is paradoxical intention, think, I don't need this person to be convinced of my point. I will just say nothing, essentially. I'll just let them do the talking and let them think they're right. You'll find you'll get like really good points and they'll come round to your idea. Whereas if you go in thinking, I really need to you know, get my point across, I need this person to understand. Actually, I've just thought of an exa another example that's worked in my life, job interviews. If you really need the job, you almost always fuck the interview up. I've had interviews before where I'd already got another job. So say you book three interviews back to back and the second job you get, I always go for the third interview just as practice for next time. And I find that third interview, because you absolutely don't need it, you sail through it, you're charismatic, you answer the questions well, and they offer you the job. And it's because you're implementing, uh, you're implementing paradoxical intention. You don't need the job at this point. You're actually, you don't want it. So you do well. So that's a good example, because I've had that multiple times. And I've had that with like different, not quite job interviews, but just human interactions where you're like, I don't really need this, but I'm just going to go along for the practice. So I thought that was interesting. Paradoxical intention. Speak to you tomorrow.